Humans have no idea what surrender is. They fight till the end. Intergalactic Council Directive The Vortan cruiser loomed above Earth, a dark shadow against the bright blue planet. Commander Raxus, the Vortan fleet's leader, stared at the view from his command deck, eyes narrowed. The humans below had no idea what was coming. On the ground, Captain Jack Mitchell barked orders over the roar of gunfire. His squad, the last line of defense for a beleaguered outpost. Hold the line, he shouted, his voice cutting through the chaos. Lieutenant O'Connell, his second in command, ducked behind a makeshift barricade. Captain, we've lost two more squads. We're running out of ammo. Mitchell scanned the battlefield, his gaze shifting from the advancing Vorton forces to the dwindling supply crates. We're not giving up, he said, gripping his rifle tightly. Not today. The Vortan's advanced weaponry made quick work of the human defenses. Plasma bolts seared through the air, and the ground shook with the force of Vortan bombardments. Despite the overwhelming odds, the humans fought back with a ferocity that surprised their enemies. Sergeant Edwards, a grizzled veteran, fired at the incoming Vortan troops. They think we're done. They've underestimated us. Mitchell nodded, eyes fixed on the enemy's formation. They've never seen us fight like this before. We've got one chance to turn this around. A sudden explosion shook the area, and Mitchell was thrown to the ground. He scrambled to his feet, heart racing. A Vorton dropship descended its ramp lowering to disgorge more enemy soldiers. O'Connell rushed to Mitchell's side. Captain, we've got to fall back to the secondary position. We can't hold them off much longer. Mitchell shook his head, determination etched on his face. No, we make our stand here. If we fall back, they'll overrun the entire sector. We need to buy time for reinforcements. The Vortans were pushing forward, Mitchell's squad, though exhausted, fought with every ounce of strength they had. They used every trick in their arsenal, laying traps and launching surprise counterattacks. Edwards turned to Mitchell, sweat streaming down his face. Captain, we need a plan. Mitchell scanned the battlefield again, his mind racing. We used the terrain to our advantage. We've got a few imp grenades left. We'll hit their dropship and take out their reinforcements. O'Connell nodded, already moving to set up the grenades. We'll need to be quick. They're almost on top of us. Mitchell gave a curt nod and readied his weapon. On my mark. Now. The imp grenades exploded, sending pulses of energy through the Vorton dropship. The ship's systems malfunctioned, and the reinforcements inside were incapacitated. The humans seized the opportunity launching a fierce counteroffensive. Despite the odds, the tide of battle began to shift. The Vortons, momentarily stunned by the imp attack, struggled to regain their footing. The human squad pressed their advantage, pushing the Vortons back and regaining some ground. Mitchell's breath came in ragged gasps as he fought alongside his men. We're not done yet. Keep pushing. The human's bravery was evident. They fought with a tenacity that defied the Vortan's expectations. The battle raged on, each side pushing and pulling for control. Mitchell knew that they were still far from victory. The Vortans had underestimated human resolve, but the fight was far from over. As he battled through the chaos, he could see the determination in his squad's eyes. They were fighting not just for survival, but for a chance to prove that humanity would not be easily defeated. The Vortons regrouped and prepared for another assault. They braced themselves for the next wave, their resolve hardening with each passing moment. The fight continued, each side locked in a brutal struggle for dominance. The humans, against all odds, were showing the Vortons the true meaning of resistance. They adapt. They endure. They resist longer than any species we've encountered. Vortan Intelligence Report The Vortons pressed forward, relentless in their pursuit. The human outpost had become a battlefield strewn with debris, charred bodies, and the echoes of defiance.
Captain Mitchell wiped the sweat from his brow, his rifle feeling heavier with every passing minute. Incoming, O'Connell's voice boomed over the comm as another volley of plasma fire rained down from the sky. The Vorten artillery had begun to systematically flatten what little cover remained. Mitchell ducked behind a crumbling wall, grimacing as he spotted more Vortan drop pods descending. Reinforcements. The Vortans were sending in everything they had. His men were exhausted, down to their last rounds of ammunition. We're nearly out of ammo, sir. Sergeant Edwards shouted over the noise. His voice hoarse. His weapon clicked dry as he ejected the last magazine. Then we fight with what we've got, Mitchell growled. His mind was racing. The MP gamut had bought them time, but not enough. The Vortans were learning, adapting. They would overwhelm them in minutes unless something changed. Mitchell tapped his comm, barking orders to his men. Set up the last of the trip mines. O'Connell, get that portable shield generator online. Edwards, get the rest of the grenades prepped. We're not done yet. As his men scrambled to follow orders, Mitchell locked eyes with O'Connell. How long can we hold this position? O'Connell grimaced, pulling the shield generator out from its casing. Maybe another five minutes, max. The Vortons are closing in fast. Mitchell nodded. Five minutes is enough. As the shield hummed to life, creating a protective dome around the remaining human forces, the Vorton troops regrouped and launched another assault. Plasma bolts sizzled against the shield, but for the moment, they were safe. Captain, O'Connell called out, glancing at his data pad. We've got a signal coming through. It's scrambled, but it looks like reinforcements are on their way. Ada, ten minutes. Mitchell swore under his breath. Ten minutes. We don't have ten minutes. He scanned the battlefield, calculating their odds. There were too many Vortans, and they were too well equipped. But surrender? That wasn't in the human playbook. Sir, Edwards called out. The mines are set. They won't know what hit them. Mitchell nodded, gripping his rifle. All right, then. Let's make sure they never forget. The Vortans charged again, their massive forms crashing against the shield. The ground shook as they pounded it with relentless artillery. Mitchell's men braced themselves, ready for the shield to collapse. And then, with a crackle, it did. Fire! Mitchell yelled, and the squad unleashed everything they had left. Grenades flew, rifles barked, and the air filled with the stench of burning metal as the Vortans hit the minefield. Explosions ripped through their ranks, scattering bodies and debris. The human counterattack was sudden and vicious, catching the Vortans off guard. O'Connell fired his last rounds, his jaw clenched in frustration. They're still coming, sir. Mitchell looked at the approaching Vortans, their numbers still overwhelming despite the devastation. His hands tightened around his rifle. Then we keep fighting until we can't. He could see the desperation in his men's eyes, but also the fire. They were outgunned, outmanned, and running on fumes, but none of them showed any sign of backing down. Sergeant, Mitchell called to Edwards. Pull whatever's left of our men together. Tighten the perimeter. Edwards nodded and moved to rally the remaining troops. Mitchell took a breath, his mind flashing back to earth. He wasn't just fighting for survival. This was about more than holding a line. It was about sending a message. The Vortons thought this planet would fall easily, that they could roll over humanity and add Earth to their empire without a fight. But they were wrong. Mitchell fired another shot, taking down a Vorton soldier. O'Connell, any word from command? O'Connell, frantically working on his data pad, grimaced. We will hold, Mitchell snapped. We have no other option. A distant rumble echoed across the battlefield. Vortan assault tanks were approaching, their turrets swiveling toward the human line. Mitchell's heart sank. They had no anti-tank weapons left, no way to stop the oncoming behemoths. But surrender was still not an option. 
Edwards, Mitchell shouted. Get your men back here. We're not holding this line anymore. Edwards looked up, confused. Where do you want us to fall back to, sir? Mitchell glanced at the Vorton tanks, calculating the distance. We're going to take the fight to them. Get ready to charge. O'Connell's eyes widened. Captain, that's suicide. Mitchell's lips curled into a smile. Maybe, but we've got nothing left to lose. We're taking those tanks out one way or another. The squad gathered around him, eyes filled with a mixture of fear and resolve. Mitchell raised his rifle. Mitchell raised his rifle. We charge in five. On my mark. The ground shook as the Vortan tanks drew closer, their weapons primed to fire. Four, three, two, one, charge. The human soldiers surged forward, a desperate last stand against an overwhelming foe. They don't know when to quit, even when they should. Vortan tactical analysis. Mitchell led the charge, sprinting across the battlefield toward the Vortan tanks. Plasma fire rained down from all sides, burning into the ground and tearing through the air. The humans, a ragtag band of exhausted soldiers. They were out of options, and everyone knew it. Sergeant Edwards was at Mitchell's side, his rifle spitting out its last rounds. We won't make it, Captain, but we'll damn sure hurt them on the way down. Mitchell kept his eyes on the Vorten tanks, blocking out the chaos around him. We're not here to die, Sergeant. We're here to win. The tanks rolled forward, their massive turrets rotating toward the charging humans. Mitchell could feel the ground vibrate beneath his feet as the lead tank fired its main cannon. The blast shook the air, but Mitchell and his men kept running, zig, zagging to avoid the plasma explosions tearing apart the ground. Get to the treads, Mitchell shouted over the noise. Disable their movement and their sitting ducks. The Vortons hadn't expected such a bold move. Mitchell could see it in the way their infantry hesitated, caught off guard by the humans' sheer audacity. They had underestimated humanity's refusal to die quietly. O'Connell threw the last of his imp grenades, rolling it under the lead tank. The grenade detonated with a pulse of energy, and the tank systems flickered. Its turret whirred to a stop and the massive vehicle ground to a halt, immobilized. That's one down, O'Connell shouted. Mitchell's heart pounded in his chest as he sprinted toward the next tank. They had seconds before the Vortons recalibrated. He dove under the hull, sliding across the dirt, and jammed a grenade into the tank's track. Dit clear, Mitchell bellowed as he scrambled to his feet. The explosion rocked the tank tearing its treads apart. It lurched. Unable to move, Mitchell turned to see the rest of his squad doing the same, disabling the other tanks with their remaining grenades and makeshift explosives. Sergeant Edwards, blood running from a gash on his forehead, let out a laugh. Damn, Captain. I didn't think we'd live long enough to see that work. Mitchell gave a curt nod, breathless. Don't start celebrating yet. We're still surrounded. The disabled Vortan tanks sat smoking, their massive frames no longer a threat. But the Vortan infantry had regrouped. Hundreds of alien soldiers began closing in. Their weapons trained on the small group of humans standing in the wreckage of the battlefield. O'Connell dropped to his knee, panting, his rifle overheating. Captain, we've got no cover, no ammo, and no more tricks. What now? Mitchell's mind raced. They had slowed the Vortan advance, but it wasn't enough. The reinforcements were still minutes away, and they couldn't survive another assault. His men were tired, bleeding, and on the verge of collapse. But surrender was not an option. We don't need to survive, Mitchell said, straightening up. He turned to face the Vortan soldiers approaching from all sides. Plasma rifles hummed as they leveled their weapons at the humans. Mitchell raised his empty rifle, staring down the enemy. Hold your ground, men. Make them fight for every inch. The Vortan commander stepped forward, his voice booming over a translator. Human, 
you have fought well. But this is the end. Surrender, and we will spare your lives. Mitchell locked eyes with the commander. We don't know the meaning of surrender. A tense silence fell over the battlefield. The Vorton commander narrowed his eyes, clearly irritated. He raised a clawed hand, signaling his troops to open fire. But before they could, a rumble echoed from the skies. Mitchell's heart leapt. High above, streaks of fire cut through the atmosphere as human dropships descended, flanked by a fleet of warships. The cavalry had arrived. That's our ride, boys, Edward shouted, his voice raw with adrenaline. Mitchell grinned, the weight of the battle lifting from his shoulders. The Vorton commander barked orders, trying to reorganize his troops, but it was too late. The human ships unleashed a barrage of fire, ripping through the Vortan ranks. The ground shook as human reinforcements poured in, overwhelming the Vortan soldiers, who moments ago had seemed unbeatable. Mitchell watched as the tide of the battle finally turned, his squad bolstered by the fresh soldiers. O'Connell staggered to his feet, shaking his head in disbelief. Mitchell looked around at the battlefield, littered with the remains of Vortan forces and disabled tanks. His squad stood victorious. Yeah, he said. We did. The Vortan fleet began retreating, their arrogance shattered by the human forces. Mitchell watched them go, his mind already turning to the next battle. There would be more fights, more impossible odds. But he knew one thing for sure. As long as there was breath left in them, humans would never stop fighting. We held the line, Mitchell said quietly, gripping his rifle tighter, and they'll remember us for it. With the Vortans in retreat and the battlefield secured, Mitchell and his men stood victorious, bruised but unbroken. Against all odds, they had shown the galaxy that humanity wouldn't be conquered. Not today. Not ever.